Hey everybody, Adam Savage in my cave for testing, and um, I know it's been a while since I've done one of these videos. Um, I have been uh, self-soothing off camera uh, by grinding a sword. Um, years ago, I went to a Weta workshop and Weta's sword master, Peter Lyon, taught me the rudiments the very beginnings of training in the grinding and shaping of swords. Uh, I have used that skill several times since then. And uh, a few months ago, I picked up a sword blank made by a company and um, we will include a link in the comments below. This company sells differentially heated pieces of steel in the shape of swords that are rough forged. So if you wanna turn them into a sword, you've gotta do all the grinding and sharpening yourself. And I took that piece and I ground it within an inch of its life. I spent about 12 to 15 hours over the past week here in the cave, just listening to music and slowly, slowly, slowly grinding. I'm sorry, I did not cover any of that because I didn't want to. I wanted just the, quiet space of a meditative and repetitive action. I find that a very therapeutic practice, especially because I've been traveling a ton, right? What you might not know is that I've done a whole ton of cons so far, I think seven cons in the last three months. So I've been traveling almost constantly. It's been tiring. It's the first time I've traveled in a long time and it's been great getting out to see people, but it also left me feeling a little wan, a little thin here on the ground in San Francisco. So I took on this task of grinding the sword because I thought that object will feel great. And when I had the sword finished or finished to my specs, which was still like far from perfect, um, I decided to jump into a technique that I've seen Peter Lyon do at Weta because he doesn't just make swords. He often, he makes most of his weapons are, are, are within a narrative of a film. So they're not all brand new. They're not all as issued, as made. So how does he age them? Well, one of the ways he ages swords is by uh, etching them, etching the aging in, in multiple passes. That's how he adds all the pits and the rotting on the Morgul blade that uh, one of the nine stabs Frodo with in the Lord of the Rings. Um, but he also uses acid to etch. So I pulled out some of my rust activator, some rust acid. I don't know, it's probably, I don't know what kind of acid it exactly was but I applied it to my stainless steel sword. And here you go, here is here is the blade that I grind. I know it's kind of hard to see it. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna lay it on this table and I'm gonna pan over it. Oh, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pan over my sword and then post the treatment I'm about to do, I'll pan over it again. So here we go, let's see. Okay, here is the sword blank that I bought. And now you can see the kind of grinding I did on it. I hollow ground with a four inch wheel, both sides, the real challenge, keeping that center spine crisp. I was sometimes very successful at that, as I am right here, that is nice and sharp. That is a little duller here and on the other side. Yeah, it's a little duller here, a little sharper here. That is a really hard thing to do, but I am, okay, so there is the, yeah, is that how I want to do it? Okay, let's try this pan. We're gonna do this. Because I'm thinking that we'll put one of these on top of the other. So we'll start here, pan like this. You can see all the rust sitting on there. Oh, look at that, my pretty blade, all set up. So here we go. Again, this stuff is non-toxic. While it has definitely dried out my skin a little bit when I've been working with it, that's it. I mean, it is. it does not sting, it does not burn. It is, I really dig this stuff because there are a lot of ways to remove rust that none of those things are true. <laughs> uh, I don't need much more than that. Yeah, that should be plenty. Um, and now I'm gonna let it sit overnight. Just make sure it's full. Ooh, wow. Ooh. Again, I splash, but I don't have to worry about the splash. It's not like it's spraying acid everywhere. It's great. Just wash this off my hands. Okay. Whoa. Very excited. Um, yeah, like I said, this is a differentially heated blade, which means that like a real sword, it's got a, 
It's got a softer central spine than the outside edges, which are made harder in order to hold an edge. But if you made an entire sword hard enough to hold an edge permanently, it would be too brittle to utilize. So proper construction of a sword is a soft center spine and harder uh, edges. I probably should have said that at the opening. That's not a fact that really fits into the cut here. It didn't occur to me back then. Well, I did and then I forgot about it. I think I can just go away. Um, hey, happy Halloween. You don't know that it's Halloween, but it's almost Halloween in this reality I'm standing in right now. After a couple of hours, I see some progress, but I'm gonna leave this overnight. I really wanna see how it goes. It's looking really lovely though. Okay, um, it's now Tuesday. So it's been like Saturday, Sunday, my, four days almost. Uh, and I'm gonna take a close up of what it looks like in here because it's been sitting in the rust remover now for a while. All right, here we go. You can see that the liquid has changed color, but note the surface. Yeah, that's all scale that I believe will just like fall right off. All that stuff, all that, yeah, there we go. All that stuff I think is all just like tarnish that will peel right off. And once again, because this miraculous stuff is non-toxic, I don't have to worry about chemical exposure to it. Uh, I am gonna put on gloves just because, like if there's grime, I, you know. But it's just much more relaxing to work around substances that are not toxic. All right. Um, this is reusable, but I've only used a small amount. I'm not gonna reuse this stuff. I'm not gonna find a container to put this in and call it semi-used rust remover. It's literally like way less than a pint. All right, so I'm just gonna pour it out here. Okay. I'm taking a look. Actually, here, let's um, bring the camera over. I'm a little nervous. I don't know what this is. I'm curious what this is going to look like. All right, so we can see what it looks like. I'm just going to try very gently. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. 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 Okay, here, let's do this again over here. Yeah. We're just pulling this gunk right off. Ooh, look at that yummy stuff. Yeah, I'm glad I put on some gloves. Mm. All right. Back down there. We're going to, right, wash this off. Sorry about that. Hope it didn't make you sick. to the workbench. Okay, there is a, this process of rusting the hell out of it and then pulling the rust back off 
um, yielded a really interesting patina, uh, one that hides a lot of the crimes of my poor grinding. Um, if you look, if you look, uh, uh, sorry, there you go. If you look down the, the straight, yeah, you can kind of see, let's see here. How do I do this? How do I show you how, how not great I am at this? Let's, see, let's try this. I mean, it looks really nice, I know. <laughs> the camera hides so much. Um, when this was like shiny, it definitely was really clear that there were some spots that I had not addressed. Also, I will say that like my, my center line is a lot sharper here than it is here. I, the difference is really, really minor, I know, um, but I am sensitized to it. Um, I'm toying with the idea of just rubbing some Never Dull on this, just to see if I could bring the tonality up just a little. I like how this has this dark patina, like an old blade, but somehow, well, look, if it's a total disaster, I'll just re-rust it and re-remove it. Uh, okay, so what's Never Dull, you ask? Well, this stuff. Um, Early boss Jonathan Searles told me about this stuff and magic wadding polish. Magic wadding polish. Um, this tends to be a great, it's a terrific polish. Uh, it comes like this. You can smell the polish on it and it's basically like a soaked cotton with a polish compound in it and it's super gentle. So let's just see. Let me see if I can. I'm gonna try this old Tony view here. By the way, how great is it that this old Tony is back? Oh, you didn't know that? Yeah, there's a video from this old Tony and boy, it's about time, I missed him. Okay, here we go. Ooh, wide angle lens. Okay, so let's see if I can, yeah. We'll get some reflective light on this. All right, so we can see it. And then I'm just gonna hit it. Yeah, it's going to pull some of this black off, I'm sure. Let's just go to the other side. Now I'm going to turn it over on the fresh side here. I know I'm out of breath. It's a lot of work. Okay, yeah, I'm really out of shape. Now I have to be careful because this blade is actually somewhat sharp in some of its spots. I'm gonna have it professionally sharpened when I'm all done with it, but okay. Now that is more about where I wanted to end up. Oh, look at how pretty. Oh yeah. Look, it's not a, it's, it's, I see lots of problems and yet I also see progress. I'm getting better at doing this uh, and I think my sword teacher would be proud. But I clearly need to build a new linisher. Let's look at this up close. Oh yeah. Oh wait, let me do this one. Here we go. That's it. Look at that. That is, that's a great patina. Ooh. All right. I, I am happy. Where is this gonna go? The answer is I don't know. I bought this blade blank with the intent to grind it. Now, um, I think I'm gonna machine a pommel for it out of copper, something heavy. this lovely chunk of copper, just like that, right? I just want to counterbalance it. So I'm going to machine a little copper pommel for it, and then I'm going to start to, like, because that's the next step I know. Uh, I'm going to make a guard, but I don't know what that's going to look like yet. I have some ideas. Yeah, to be continued. This is, what do you call this, a piece of a one-day build? We'll figure it out. One of the things I love about this channel is that we don't make 
how-to videos so much as we make what happened videos. And what almost always happens are mistakes and screw-ups. In fact, they're completely integral to making and honestly to being a person. And to celebrate this, Tested has a new batch of demerit badges for the screw-ups you will encounter in the shop. From left to right, we have touching your paint job, assembling things backwards, losing a tiny screw or part, gluing your fingers together, and smashing your thumb. And frankly, if you haven't done both of these, even if you're not a maker, I just don't feel like you've experienced enough of the world. I'm not saying get out a hammer and smash your thumb, but I will tell you that the blacker your fingernail after the injury, the less it's gonna hurt in the long run. I almost forgot, these make excellent additions to your shop apron and they are available at tested-store.com.